Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video I'd like to show you how to do the same thing we do with the spur gear when you go to the gear mate and apply that to a bevel gear so that we can actually take our gear uh, rotational energy and uh, translate that in uh, 90 degrees, so to speak. So, let's do this. Uh, just like we did with the, with the spur gear, let's go ahead and open up one of these gears so you have an idea how to actually make one of these. So this is kind of a revolve feature. So we'll open up our 6 inch gear and just like last time, what we have are two different configurations of it. We have a two inch and a six inch uh, double gear, but six inch is a little bit bigger. I think it's probably easier to follow, so let's go ahead and look at that one. Rollback bar, let's go ahead and roll back our feature to our revolve one and take a look at our sketch. It helps drive this. What we have here is a sketch, and what we want to do when we put in the sketch is we want to make sure that, again, just like with everything else, if you can draw, if you can sketch with, ge with geometry and uh, uh, symmetry, we're going to go ahead and do that. So we want to make sure our, our um, our origin is going to be right here in the middle. If our origin is going to be in the middle, then our right and uh, uh, front plane, right top and front plane, are all going to be bisecting our gear. And just to demonstrate that real quick, we have our front plane out front, which is going to bisect it right down the middle. Not symmetrical necessarily front to the back, but it's equal distance from the back face to the front face. And the top gear, or the top plane, and then the right plane uh, bisect it uh, in, a, in a similar manner. So what we want to do, uh, draw us a, a short line down here, which is going to be a half an inch long. I uh, drew my, um, you know, my line down here, and uh, I went ahead and drew two vertical lines up here. And I also want to make sure that uh, we, in order to maintain that, um, that gear ratio, I want to make sure that uh, the intersection, the, you know, the pitch diameter, which is going to be right in the middle of our, um, our bevel gear, is going to be right here in the middle too. So I want to make sure I have that six inch dimension as a diameter going from a point that I put in up here, you know, again, just dimension into the center line will automatically make a dimension, a diameter dimension out of that. So let me show you how we did this. We're going to go ahead and delete that, and we're going to have to reestablish that relationship when we get back into our um, assembly. But uh, two vertical lines. We don't have a, you know, we don't have that established as being in the center of that thing, but we can right-click in this line, select the midpoint, Put it right in the middle of that, and we'll make a, that coincident. Now we have uh, the top of that line, uh, which has got that bevel to it, that chamfer in a way. And a good way to do that is put a, uh, um, a point up there. I'm going to exaggerate and put that point off to the side. But we're going to take that point with the control key depressed and click on that center line. We're going to make those coincident with each other. So the only thing we have left to define here is an actual distance. So we're going to click on that point. Clicking that center line, and remember if we keep our dimension in this side of that line, it considers it to be a radius. If we put it on that side of the center line, it considers it now to be a diameter. That's what we want, and we're going to put in the value of 6. So that's how you sketch that. And of course, with the revolve feature, just to show you the steps in that, what the what the revolve feature is looking for here is enclosed geometry, which is what we have here with all the sketch lines. We also have two center lines in here, too. So it's going to ask us which line we want. And we want to make sure that we choose the correct line. We can choose this line, and um, you know, may not have a very desirable result, but uh, this line would uh, actually be the better choice. And you can see it's going to take that enclosed geometry and revolve it around itself. Otherwise, it would kind of revolve around itself here and probably look like, I don't know, like a pencil in a way. So that's what you want. That's what creates that model. And of course, just like before, we created a marker with thin extrude. You can look at the spur gear an example and see how that was put together. And an axle too. And one additional element here is going to be our sketch 4. One uh, desiring, uh, desirable aspect of being able to draw this with the symmetry and having that front plane right in the middle of this um, is that our sketch 4 is going to be on that front plane. And what I want to do with that sketch 4 is be able to uh, put that on the geometry of that uh, revolved feature sketch that we already have in there. So let's go ahead and look at that sketch. Revolve 1, and I should rename these features, but uh, we'll do that here in a minute. Uh, we want to make sure that that sketch is shown. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's right click on that and show that sketch. So now we see that point. This is the reason why we put that point, and one of the reasons we put that point in there is we can take this circle, which is originated from the origin, click on that point, and we're going to make that coincident. Just to double check, we're going to put a dimension on that. Now, this is fully defined, so what's going to happen to that dimension? It's going to hate us, and it's going to suggest that that dimension be driven. It's going to be driven by the existing geometry, and that's okay. We just want that dimension in there as a reference. 
So that's fully defined. Go ahead and rebuild our revolve. We'll probably call that uh, revolve base or base revolve, just to be consistent with everything else we're going to be doing in the corner. And then we have marker and axle, and I think we're in pretty good shape there. Let's go ahead and hide our, our, our uh, sketches. But we do want to we do want to see that sketch because we're going to be using that when we get into our assembly. So rebuild. Let's go ahead and close that out, and yes, we're going to go ahead and save that. So there's our six inch um, gear. Let's go ahead and get our two inch gear. So if you have uh, two different configurations here, isn't quite working out, we're going to make this our two inch. Let's go into properties and choose the two inch default. Ooh, doesn't quite work. So let's go back to our uh, model here and see what's going on here. It should be our two inch, that should be our six inch. So we kind of changed things here. So with the two inch, if you want to take that dimension, just like we did with the spur gear. Let's go ahead and right click in this thing and configure that dimension. So for the 2 inch we're going to make that not 6 inch, we're going to make that 2 inch. And for the 6 inch we're going to make that 6 inch. And one thing we want to do with the 2 inch is we also want to make this show. We want to make sure that uh, that sketch is showing there too. Okay. Quickly remedied. Let's put this together. We have our mates in here just like we did before. We have a concentric and then a distance mate. Just like with the spur gear, we have a concentric mate with holes that are already existing in the model on uh, that base that we have uh, to put our gears on. And then we have our gear mate. So let's go ahead and uh, suppress that. It's still there, but it's not active anymore. And let's go ahead and make our uh, surfaces uh, again coincident with each other. We're going to make them parallel. Parallel works this time. Go to the green check mark. Green check mark again, and let's go ahead and suppress that. So now we're all set to go. Now, just like with the spur gear, when we put the gear uh, made in here, it's going to be looking for an edge or a sketch. Now we have two different edges we could choose. We could choose this edge, which we know is going to be less than six inches, or this edge up here, which is going to be more than six inches. And if we do that, it's going to kind of goof up our ratios. So what we do is we have a sketch. It's right here in the middle of our uh, bevel gear, which will serve as our uh, pitch diameter. And we have the same thing with our two inch gear over here. So let's go to mate, go to mechanical mates, go to gear mate, make our selections, which are going to be these two sketches. And again, the gear ratio is six to two, uh, three to one gear ratio. It already knows that because it takes the diameter of these things, these uh, two uh, sketches. And then we're going to go to the green check mark, green check mark again. And we get to play with this again. Let's go ahead and hide those um, those sketches. And there we go. Round and around we go. Three times around with this, we'll bring the, the larger gear back into play one time. So three times around with the small gear is uh, one time around with the big gear, and vice versa if you're to spin the big gear into the small gear. All right. I think that's enough for this video. Please join me for other ones.